Good day, my name is Jessa Bula and for today, I'm going to perform head-to-toe assessment. So, what is head-to-toe assessment? A head-to-toe assessment is a physical or health assessment that is one of the most important components of understanding our patient's need and problem. So before we will begin our assessment, we first um, check our patient's chart. Um, we want to see their current situation, um, their diagnosis, and then of course we will do hand hygiene. And then we will inform our patient about the procedure that we will be going to do. We will gather all the equipment that we need and to provide patients privacy. Um, good morning ma'am, um, I'm Jessa Bulan, your PN student for today. So. For today, we will be having our head-to-toe assessment. Is that okay with you? Yes. Okay, well, I'll go get all my supplies and I'll come back. So, this is all the equipment that I need. The stethoscope, the BP cuff, a mask, gloves, body ther um, thermometer, um, tongue depressor or tongue blade, a um, cotton, alcohol, you need an otoscope, and pin light. Just privacy. room now so first I need to do hand hygiene so mom I'm just a bulan your PN for today so may I know what is your name please Jelly Bulan okay and when is your birthday October 3001 so what are we doing right now going to head to toe assessment and who is the president of the Philippines President Rodrigo Roa the Turkey. Okay, so the patient um, is alert and oriented. Uh, she answers all my questions attentively. Um, she dressed according to the occasion and of course she indicated a good hygiene. So now we will perform a vital sign. is the lowest pain or no pain at all and 10 is the highest pain so which pain do you experience um zero so none so after we get the vital signs of our patient we also need to include the height and weight of our patient and the bmi or the body mass index so the body mass index um, less than 18.5 is considered underweight and the BMI over, over 30 is considered as obese. So now we will examine um, the patient's skin, eyes, nose and eyebrows and the skin color. So our patient's skin is fair in complexion. Uh, the area where it's exposed to the sun is uh, darker than the rest of her body. Her skin is smooth, uh, it's soft, um, it's moist. There is no signs of lesions and edema. And when her skin is pinched, it's go back to its previous state. And the temperature is normal limit. Now we are going to inspect and palpate her head. Okay, we're going to inspect and palpate her head. Okay, we will see the head and size, um, its shape and configuration. So, we will inspect the hair. Okay, so her head is round and it's symmetrical in size and i've seen no lesions there is no dandruff there is no lice and her hair is light black in color with some colorant or with some patch of colored hair because of 
It's a hair colorant. And then, her facial features is symmetrical. Um, her eyes, her eyebrows are, the hair of the eyebrows is evenly distributed. Um, her eyes is midline as well as the nose and the mouth. And her eyes is uniform in size. So now we're going to check the facial movements for cranial nerve number 7 which is the facial nerve and I'm going to instruct my patient um, smile from uh, the outer cheeks and close eyes tightly. So ma'am, can you smile for me? Prone, um, pop out your cheeks, and close your eyes tightly for me. Okay, so patient can be able to move her face at ease. Uh, movements are symmetrical and there is no involuntary movement. So cranial nerve number 7 is intact. Okay, now I'm going to palpate the temporal artery which is just right here. Okay. Now um, I'm going to palpate the masseter and the temporal muscles. Mom, can you open your mouth for me and open and close your mouth? Yeah. And open your mouth again, five systems. Um, can you clinch down your teeth? Okay, so now we're going to palpate the tempo mandibular joint, um, which, mom, can you um, open your, open and close your mouth for me? Okay, so, ah, uh, so we're just going to listen about the grating and clicking sound, open, open and close several times. Okay, open one. Okay, so, I don't feel anything, there is no signs of lesions and tenderness and swelling. So now we're going to inspect her sinuses. So we're going to see. Here's the frontal sinuses and here is the maximiliary sinuses. So first I want to palpate the maximiliary sinuses. Do you feel any tenderness, mom? No. Now the frontal sinuses. Do you feel any pain? No. Okay, so she don't feel any pain in her sinuses. Now we are going to inspect her eyes. So we're going to see the eyelids, the pupils, the iris, the conjunctiva. And so ma'am, can you look the up, look down, um, look to the side. The other side, so you will see. Okay. okay, so the patient's eyes is light brown in color and it's about three millimeters in size. Um, it's equal size, her eyes is symmetrical, and the eyelashes is evenly distributed as well as the eyebrows. Um, conjunctiva is pinkish with visible capillaries present and the sclera is white and shiny there is no lesions and it's not swelling eyelids okay so now we're going to test the cranial nerve number two which is the optic nerve so now we are assessing um, cranial nerve number two which is the optic nerve able to read letters that is 20 feet apart from her and without any hassles or stopping so um, her vision is 2020 which means that um, she can read or see object that is 20 feet apart and that is the normal person's vision so now for another test we will do a um, confront confrontation visual field which um, the person or the patient will look the object 
in the Pera Pera tradition. So, Mom, um, I want you to cover your eye for me. So, cover your right eye and I cover my left eye. And I want you to focus on my eyes. And I want you to see my hand. It's okay. I want you to tell me how many fingers are in my So, go. Go. Okay. Two. Two. Okay. So our patient can able to see an object which in peri peri. So now we are going to assess our our cranial nerve number two is intact. So now we are going to assess um cranial nerve number three, the ocular motor, the cranial nerve number four, which is the top layer, and cranial nerve number six is the abdosens. So I'm going to use my pen light on each eye and see if her eyes constrict and in the same size why I'm darken the room. So I'm going to see how her pupils reactive to light. Okay. Or look up directly to the wall and, and then I'm gonna close my light and see if your pupil is reactive to light. going to do the six pairs of gaze okay so and we will see if there is any involuntary movements of the eye called nystagmus so So we've checked everything in the eye. So the patient's eyes are perla, which means that um, pupils are equal. It's round, um, it's reactive to light, and it's accommodate. So now we're going to inspect the patient's ear and we're going to assess the tympanic membrane. The size of the ear is just symmetrical to the others. So do you feel any pain? Do you have any um, ear discharge? No. So, does it hurt? No. Here. Does it hurt? I'm going to pull it up and back, okay? And we're going to see the tympanic membrane. So, the normal tympanic membrane is pearly gray, translucent in color, and it's shiny. So, the cone of light of the patient in the right ear it should be five o'clock and on the left ear it should be seven o'clock i will cover your one ear i'm gonna upload your one ear and i'm gonna whisper some words and i want you to tell me this what i said okay so i'm gonna cover one ear and beautiful pretty okay Beautiful and pretty. Okay, the patient's ear is there's no lesions noted, it's not, um, there's no sore, and it seems to be the same in color as the rest of her skin. There's no tenderness and pain noted. It's symmetrical and it's in the same size. Um, the panic membrane is normal, and there is no any ear discharge present. So, ma'am, um, we will see if her nose is midline. So, you can see that her nose is midline. And, is there any pain? There is no lesions. Do you have any nasal discharge? No. And now, can you look a little bit? And I'm going to see the symptoms if there is any polyps. 
Okay. Um, can you okay. and breathe? Okay, another nose. Okay, so patient is not having any polyps and it's breathing normally with ease. So now I'm going to inspect her cranial nerve number one, which is the olfactory nerve. I want you to cover your eyes and I want you to smell these two things. Okay, the first one is... Okay, what's this now? This. Copy. Number one, the olfactory nerve is intact because patient can able to recognize those smell. So now we're going to inspect and see her lips. So as we can see, her lips is midline and it's symmetrical. Uh, it's moist. Uh, it's not dry and it's not chopped. So I'm going to assess her cranial lip number 12, which is the hypoglossal. So ma'am, um, can you stick out your tongue for me? and move it side to side okay so she can do that with ease and now i'm wearing my gloves because i want to spec um, inside of her mouth so mom can you open your mouth for me and stick up your tongue a bit okay so so we'll see the ovula is midline and the side cheeks are pink and the tongue is in pinkish and with there is like a white um, visible um, taste buds but not so many and the hard palate is um, irregular in shape the soft palate is moist and pink and the gums is not retract um, teeth is yellowish to white um, our by the way our patient is wearing a denture so how many false teeth you have one two three four four false teeth and see uh, we will elicit a gag reflex so. <laughs> okay our patient's mouth is we see that there is no gum retraction um, her teeth is from whitish to yellowish um, with some dental caries present um, by the way, she is wearing a denture and with an average of 28 to normal teeth and 4 false teeth and no signs of halitosis is noted. And the ovula is midline and the tonsils are not inflamed and she can able to elicit a gag reflex. Okay, tonsils are not inflamed and tonsils are smooth. There is no discharge and it's in normal size now for cranial nerve number 10 which is the vascular so mom i want you to swallow swallow and talk a little bit okay more no okay so patients are able to talk without hoarseness and she can swallow with ease now we are going to inspect her neck and as we can see her neck is midline or it's symmetrical the trachea okay here is the trachea and as we notice there it's there's no lesions or no masses now we are going to palpate does it hurt is there any pain no for the jugular vein distension so i want you to tilt her head so the jugular vein distension it's not visible so on the other side um, it's not visible so um jugular vein distension is not visible and her neck is not swelling or there is no lesions and any masses noted so now we are going to assess the cranial nerve number 11 which is the accessory nerve 
So, mom, I want you to move your head side to side. Okay. Up and down. Okay. And, okay. Shrug your head against my resistance. Okay. One more. One more. Okay. Now, I want you to squeeze my hands. Um, okay. 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 Again. Okay. Good push. Okay. Okay. Now. Okay. It's plus five meaning it's in normal strength. So accessory nerve number eleven is intact. So now we are going to assess and inspect the lymph nodes. So all sides of the lymph nodes. So mom, I want you to tell me if you feel any tenderness or pain while I'm um while I'm palpating your lymph nodes. So okay. So what we are looking here is the hard lumps that may be inflamed. So this is the preauricular, which is right in front of the ear. Then the postauricular, just behind the ear. The occipital is the base of the skull. Is it right? No. Okay. The parotid is just right below. It's here. The large, the angle of the jaw is it right? no the submandibular it's under the jaw on the side is it right now no it's the submental no okay and superficial cervical going down to the deep cervical chain Next is the posterior cervical, then lastly the supraclavicular. So now we are going to palpate the carotid artery individually. So here, normal two plus. Two plus. Now we are going to auscultate the carotid artery. So now I'm going to listen at the carotid artery. So I'm going to listen the bruit sound it using the bell of our stethoscope. So I want you to inhale and inhale and exhale. Okay, deep breath for me, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Go. Inhale and exhale. So I don't hear any blue sound in the carotid artery. Now we are going to proceed the upper extremities. So what we are looking in here is the redness or any lesions and swelling on her skin, her skin complexion. Has any signs of edema and we are checking her mobility also and as I'm going to palpate both radial artery and it's two plus now the brachial artery which is just right here Okay, and it's two plus. Now we're going to see the capillary refill. Okay, the nails are clean too. Capillary refill check. Okay, the capillary refill. This the color of her nails goes back to its normal color within second. okay there is no signs of edema and lesions there's no cyanosis okay the temperature is in normal limit okay. oh 
while removing your elbow, I am feeling any grating or the repetitions of the joint. So I didn't feel any. So on the other side, please. Okay. And now we are going to assess the drip. So I want you to stand. Okay, we don't see any drip of the hands. So now I'm um, we are going to check so we will mom open. So now we will do a upper extremity exercise. So and move your shoulder forward. Okay, backward. Okay, that's very good. Now you may you may sit down. So the upper extremities are symmetrical, there is no presence of bone deformities, the muscles are normally firm and it's coordinated movements. So now we are going to inspect and auscultate the chest and the lungs. We will see um, any signs of lesions, abnormalities in breathing, um, the locations of the bulbs, rushes and the efforts of breathing. So chest wall is intact without any tenderness or lesions. So the chest um, manifested quiet and rhythmic and effortless respiration. So now we are going to auscultate the heart sound in a five different locations based on where the valves are located. So these are the aortic, the pulmonic, heart point, tricuspid, and mitral valve. So here is the aortic and the pulmonic, the herbs point, the tricuspid, and the mitral valve. So first I'm going to auscultate the aortic using the diaphragm of our stethoscope. So now the aortic is located, um, located in the second intercostal space it's right here so the sternal notch going to the angle of blue is just right here on the right side so as you can see i put some landmarks so i'm going to remove this so we're going to listen to the hard sound okay so s2 is the loudest in this area so now it's the pulmonic bulge, which is just right in the left side. So S2 is the loudest. Okay. So let's go down to the herbs point. There is no specific value. Now the tricuspid. S1 is the loudest here. Now the mental valve, it's just right below the nipple in the left side, in the tip, intercostal space in the mid clavicular line. Just so just okay. And also we are going to listen the apical pulse of the patient. So the heart rate of the patient we're going to listen for one whole minute. is 72 because 70 to 100 is the normal heart rate of the children in the same location the aortic
tricuspid. The sense of S3 um, heart murmur sound is feared and audible um, for children, pregnant women, young adults is because it's due to the vibration that comes from the feeling of the ventricle. So in our patient, S1 and S2 is heard all over the anatomical location. There is also a heart murmur sound which is very light and barely audible which is grade 1. So as you can see, the spine, as you can see, the spine is vertically aligned, right and left shoulders and hips are of the same height. Also, this is the anterior area of the lungs. So as you've seen, I put some landmarks here. So this is where I'm going to auscultate the lungs. So now, using my diaphragm, I'm going to auscultate the lung sound. So I want you to deep breathe and out for me. Okay, inhale and exhale. Okay, ma'am. Okay, so we will begin here at the apex. So inhale. Both anterior and posterior lungs are good. Chest is intact as well as the lungs and I don't hear any abnormal lung sound. Going to assess the abdomen. So this time we are going to switch our assessment. So inspection, auscultation, percussion, and palpation. So now we will divide or we will auscultate the abdomen, the different four quadrants of the abdomen. Good morning, ma'am. So, ma'am, when is your last bowel? Yesterday. So, yesterday. So, how do you urinate? Sakit ba magihi or unsa man? Nothing. Okay, normal. Um, when is your last menstruation? Um, May. Last month? May last month. 
contour of the stomach is flat. It's there is it's there's no um, any masses and the color is just similar to the rest of her skin. The umbilicus is a midline and to auscultate the abdomen. So we will divide it into four quadrants. So this is the right lower quadrant, the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the left lower quadrant. So we're going to auscultate in this clockwise position like this. So using the bell of our stethoscope, we are going to listen the vowel sound. So we will begin at the right lower quadrant. Okay, so we will listen the vowel sound for um, one full minute. So the normal vowel sound, we, we can hear at least 5 to 30 vowel sounds per minute. Okay, I can hear. Now in the right upper quadrant. The next is the left upper quadrant. Okay. And the left lower quadrant. This is the bell of our stethoscope. We are going to listen the aortic artery just right above the umbilicus and then we are going to listen the right and left renal artery then the right and left ilia so we are going to listen to our your so just right here okay the renal artery Okay, I can hear some sound. Here's the left renal artery. Okay. Um, the left iliac just below the umbilical cord, the umbilicus. And the left, right area, which is right here. Okay. Um, the patient vowel sound is audible and it's normal it ranges from 20 to 25 um, vowel sound per minute so her abdominal contour is flat um, the color of her abdomen is white or it's similar to her body or skin color so we will do a light palpation we will using you will we will be using our two or three fingers and it's about to um, two centimeters deep so mom I want you to tell me if do you feel any pain while I'm palpating you okay so I'll begin here okay little pain and here no. So now we will do deep palpation. So about five um, centimeters deep and hard. So just tell me if you feel any tenderness, okay? So, you can any, you know?
okay there is no masses and lesions um, visible so when I palpate her stomach there is no mass masses and lesions so, so now we're heading to lower extremities so we are looking or we are inspecting here for some um, lesions wounds and edema as you can see uh, patient has a light scars in here it's a visible scars okay hair is evenly distributed the color of her lower extremity is just similar to her upper extremities and her skin and this is the tibial so there is no lesions and edema present okay. okay hair is evenly distributed okay so we are also going to see her nails and if there is any um, skin rushes wounds and we'll see her nails if it's clean or not and also we are going to palpate here behind the nail so so it's two plus legs are just a normal limit okay it is soft and the knees are in symmetrical and now we are so now i'm wearing my gloves because we will be checking or we will be checking the dorsalis speed okay and the posterior tibial just now okay so it's two plus normal that's her um lower extremity um mobility so now okay 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 so i didn't feel any grating sound of the joints Okay. Okay. No um, athlete's foot present or any rashes. Skin. Okay. Now we are going to assess uh, the Babinski reflex. So now we will um, check the Babinski reflex. So one. Okay, that's very good. Um, the lower extremities are symmetrical in size, oh, so the muscles are normally firm, um, coordinated movements, no presence of bone deformities, and also the hair is evenly distributed. The color of her lower extremities is just um, it's just uh, similar to her skin. Um, I can see that she has um, little scars on her knees, but it's just normal. Um, hair is evenly distributed. There is no presence of tenderness, lesions, and edema on her legs, on her lower legs. And also, when I moved her legs, I can't feel any grating or the repetition of the joint sound. So, she initiated um, Babinski reflex. The capillary refill is good. It goes back to its original color in about 2 to 3 seconds. So she has good um, lower body or lower extremity mobility so when i told her to move her legs she do that with ease so after we are assessing our lower extremities and before we end our assessment we would like to see and inspect again the head all the way down to the heel of our patient okay to see if there's any cracks in the heel okay any lesions in the back rashes and bed sores for example so so that's all and thank you